Hi, my name is Demar Shea Walker. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is doing great today. I want to talk about the Balenciaga situation, but I want to kind of talk about it from a different perspective. When you think about someone starting a campaign, regardless if it's a summer campaign, Thanksgiving, Christmas, holiday, whatever type of campaign, they're going to have an idea of how they want it to look, what um, they want to portray in that campaign, what they want to come across to people that will be looking at that campaign. And with a company like um, Balenciaga, before they even talked about the photographer that was going to take the picture, before they talked about locations, before they even talked about who was going to be in those pictures for those campaigns, they had to first come up with the idea, this is the direction that we want to go in. Then once they had that conversation, they had to think about, okay, who do we want to take the pictures? And then who do we want to be the models in the pictures? So it had to be, a, it's a lot of moving parts. So it isn't something that was an accident. It isn't something that, oh, we didn't know what was going on. They knew what was going on because there's so many moving parts to that campaign for it to even take place. People had to get paid. So that means people had to write checks to certain people, certain locations, certain um, places where they're going to be doing the photo shoots. Those people had to get paid, wardrobe, all these other people that came on set, makeup and all that, they had to get paid. So if you don't know what's going on, who's writing all these checks, who's making these phone calls, who's making the arrangement, who's setting up dates. So they had to know. And also with that, like the Balenciaga is blaming the photographer and the photographer is blaming Balenciaga because they're saying that they had to approve everything before we can even take the pictures. Plus, they're saying we didn't take all the pictures. We took the pictures with the kids, but we didn't take the pictures with the purse, with the um, document that was on the desk. So it's a lot of finger pointing. I hold everyone accountable for the simple fact of this. That shoot to not, could not have taken place if adults acted like adults. One, those kids had to belong to somebody. So first of all, who are the parents to these kids? And I thought if you're doing any type of modeling, any type of uh, photography, any type of um, shooting of movies or anything like that, the parent or some type of guardian have to be on set with these kids. So you're trying to tell me as a mother, you're looking at your child in an s &M situation that you don't say, hey, wait, I don't want my child in that position. Or are you okay with it because there's a paycheck attached to that? Because like I said, they had to go, they had to go scout these people. They had to look at the different models. Is this the is this the look that, that we want? Is this the body type? Is this the height? Is this the do we want females? Do we want males? They had to go through that process. And so that means they had to scout these kids out. And so whoever brought them to set, because the kids aren't coming to set by themselves. So whoever brought these kids to set, are do they have parents? Or, or are they sex traffic kids? You know what I'm saying? It's like who, who are over these kids to say, we're okay with y'all taking these type of pictures? No one's standing up to say, hey, I don't think I want my child looking like they're in some type of sex scene, some type of perverted sex scene. And then also as a photographer, you're seeing Balenciaga okay this, but as an adult, you don't look at that and see anything wrong with these kids in these sexual positions, in these sexual outfits that I look at as erotica to some people that, that are looked at as S&M. And it's like, like I said, where are the, all the adults in this? And the reason I'm pointing this out and the reason why I want to go this route with this situation with um, Balenciaga, because there are people that are elitist. 
There are people that are warriors. And let me read the definition of warrior for you. Warrior, a person who gets sexual pleasure from um, secretly watching other people in sexual situation. So there are some people, because like, let me go back for a minute. Back in the days, they used to have phone sex operators. Now imagine this. Now this is like the, the, the mindset of some people. A person is on the other end of the phone. There's no video. You don't see anything. All you do is hear a voice on the other end of the phone. That voice is talking your sexual fantasies. Whatever you want that person to be, they're going to be for you. You could be talking to a man that sounds like a woman. You could be talking, you know, you might not be attracted to someone who's overweight. This person can be sitting there overweight. And they're, and they're describing themselves as this, you know, Coke bottle shape and everything like that. But these men sit on the phone. They don't get their credit card number. So they're running up that credit card bill just to have a phone conversation with someone on a sexual level. Then they had peep shows where you could just watch. You can't touch anything like that. So some people are into watching. Some people are into watching kids. So everybody's saying... Um, Balenciaga should be canceled, but the damage was already done because when it comes to the elitists, somebody paid for that to go through. Somebody okayed that to go through. Why? Because somebody wanted to see it. Somebody's fantasy was to be able to go on Balenci excuse me, Balenciaga website and see this type of erotica, something that's turning them on with kids, and that's why it was pushed through. That's why, like I said, Somebody had to bring those kids there. Somebody, the photographer was okay with taking that picture. Everybody want to point fingers now because the public is outraged. But what they wanted to do has already been done. The elitists who had that conversation with whoever got that sick fantasy, that was fulfilled for them. So anything after that, it's like, it's, I'm not going to say it's pointless, but it's like, Okay, not now it's like everyone else is getting blamed for this, but really it's the elitists who push all this emotion. Because like I said, you're trying to tell me there's no parent out there that's going to look at this and say, I don't want my child part of this campaign. Or are you feeling, feeling like it's okay? Because some parents are okay with that because they're looking at, well, my child is not actually being sexually assaulted. Or they're looking at, well, no one's actually touching my child. I'm okay with them taking a the picture. I'm okay knowing that a pervert is going to be looking at that picture, doing whatever they, they're, they want to while looking at that. I'm okay with that as long as the check clear. Some parents got that mentality. And then, like I said, photographers, a lot of people don't care because of the check. They sold, they sold for a check and they're okay with that because there's so many people could, that could have said no and to the point that this campaign would have never went through. And then for it to be up on the website and everybody like, well, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. You know, come on. You're trying to tell me no one felt there was anything wrong with this. And the reason why they didn't feel anything was wrong with this, because the elitists put it in motion. They had to follow through with it to get it done. It was done. Now the backlash come and now they're dealing with it by pointing fingers at everyone else. And whoever, whoever the ball lands on, they're okay with that person taking the heat for everything. So that's the th type of thing that you have to look at. And that's the type of thing you have to be mindful of. It's not just the one company, Balenciaga. It's, it's the leaders. It's the whole group of people that's okay with pushing this type of thing through because some people are very perverted. Anytime you have money involved, especially when it comes to sex, they're okay with that. They will push it through. You have you ever heard of the um, remember the phrase six degrees of separation? That's why people don't talk about um, um, pedophilia. That's why they don't talk about sexual assault against kids. That's why they don't want to push the issue. That's why a lot of people get silenced from this because there's six degrees of separation. There's six degrees of separation from some, knowing someone who was molested as a child. Six degrees of separation of knowing someone who molested someone that was a child. So these people don't want to say anything because they know someone who, who this has been done to or 
they know someone who's currently doing this to kids and they don't want to say anything. Because why? Because position, power, and money. Those things make people shut up. Those things make people become fearful. Those things make people say, I don't want to lose my position, so I'm not going to say anything. And a lot of people keep saying about Kim, Kim should say something. Kim could say, should say something. If she's under contract, and I'm not defending her, if she's under contract, she's not going to say anything. She was under contract with her husband. She was under contract with Ye. That's her husband. And the contract was a marriage. She did not want to conform to the things that comes along with the marriage. So she was okay with disinvolving that contract, walking away from that situation. But at the same time, when something goes on with the kids, she's not willing to walk away from that. So that right there tells you her mentality and where her loyalty lies at, what she's okay with, um, what she's okay with, and what she's not okay with. Because Kanye Ye was just saying, you're my wife. You should not be very sexual on um, the things you do by taking pictures and posting pictures. And we should protect our daughter by not letting her be on TikTok. She wasn't okay with that. Exposed, exposed, exposed. She's okay with that. So that right there tell you who she is as an individual and as a person. And this is another thing I, I, I um, have a problem with. And this is something I used to talk to with my mom all the time. The word sorry. I don't understand why people are so pressed to hear the word sorry. They will sit there and say to someone, okay, you did me wrong, you did me wrong. Now apologize. And that person will be like, well, I'm not going to apologize. And they're upset with that person. But as soon as that, that, they, that person can say, I'm not going to apologize. And three seconds later, that person can be say, I'm sorry. Okay, I was wrong. And that person, and then the other person is willing to accept that apology. I'm not that type of person. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm not that type of person. If you do something wrong to me and we're in a relationship, whatever type of relationship we, we may be in, and you're doing something that's hurting me, and I say to you, this is hurting me. What you're doing is hurting me. This is why it's hurting me. This is why I would like for you to stop doing this. And that person keep doing it. Saying they're sorry isn't going to solve the problem because you can say you're sorry to me all day long until your behavior change. Sorry is just empty. So when you sit here and ask, say these people need to apologize, the only thing apologize, excuse me, the only reason they apologize is because that makes society as a whole okay with them again. So the first thing they say, well, I don't understand why we can't shop there anymore. They apologize. I don't understand why we can't continue to support them because they said they were sorry. They understood what they was doing wrong. But then you see these people keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again because the apology was empty. Change should come first. When change comes, that's when a person get the, the, the thought process of, you know what? I, I need to apologize to that person because I see what I did was wrong and I shouldn't have did it. I understand why it was wrong and their behavior changed based on that because their heart changed. But if their heart is not in that apology, that apology is useless. And so it's like, I'm not going to force anyone to apologize to me because that's not going to change their behavior. And when you do this to these companies or you do this to the individual, oh, they should apologize. Oh, they should do this or they should do that. All you're doing is making it okay for them to continue to mess up. When you see someone doing something that goes against the grain and fabric of who you are, it goes against your soul. It goes against what you stand on as an individual. Walk away from these people. You don't have to wait for the mass society to do it as an individual. And I'm not saying don't highlight it. I'm not saying don't point it out. I'm not saying don't do this, don't do that. But don't ask for an apology for one. And two, walk away from it. Because if they, if they are adults, they know what they do, did wrong. And their behavior should change. But their behavior is not going to be changed because this is who they are. This is what is ingrained in them. This is their soul. And it's not going to change because they like what they're doing. They like the effects of what they're doing. Bad press, good press, they don't care. They just like they're being talked about. They just like that their name is out there. And like I said, never shy away from pointing out something wrong. 
Never shy away from pointing out child abuse. Never shy away from any of that. But at the same time, don't beg for something that you're not going to get. The only thing you need to do is say, you know what, as a company, I'm not going to help with this company no more. As an individual, I'm not going to help with that person no more and just walk away. But yeah, keep putting pressure on them, but, but make it your business as an individual because it starts with one person saying, you know what, I'm not going to invest my money in this company anymore. And then if each individual have that mindset, guess what? That will automatically force their hand that would automatically make things change because guess what's going to happen their bottom line is going to start dropping their sales are not going to be as high anymore but as soon as you say oh i'm sorry <laughs> they're going to they're going to continue doing that and then what when their money when their pockets are still getting fatter 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 and fatter what is there for them to change why would why would they ch be change why would they um change they're not and I want to um, show a video dealing with the sexual abuse of kids and people really need to start taking this serious. There's a thing called sexual tourism where people will leave from one country to the next to have sex with kids and um, they really don't care about these kids. And it's, it, it just pains me so much that society as a whole don't say anything. You see people protesting. When, when Roe versus Wade came out, you seen the uproar with that. With all these people on both sides fighting against each other because they wanted to say, hey, women should have the right to have a child, to, um, to not have a child and, use, and have an abortion. Women need to not have an abortion and have the kids. But when the kids come out and they're being abused, you don't hear anything. Where's the protest for that? Where's the outrage for that? You don't see that. You've seen people fighting tooth and nails for Democrat and for, for Republic. Oh, the vote, the, the, they, they stole the vote. They stole the election. But what about all these stolen children? What about all these children that's been, being put in sexual situations being kidnapped, being, being, being forced to do all this awful stuff. Where's the outrage for that? Where is the protest for that? I want to see that. I want to see people march for that. But they don't and they won't because why? Because like I said, it's six degrees of separation. Money, power, and, and elitists, they don't want to mess that up for no one. Even if it's their child, they don't care. They will still let that happen and be okay with it. Look at the, the Catholic Church. All those kids was molested. Nothing was ever done to any of those priests. And people still buddy up to the Catholic religion. People still are okay with the Pope. The Pope gets, could do something about it, but he chose not to. And he's supposed to be a religious man. And you see all these kids are being hurt, but you do nothing to stop it. And you can't sit here and tell me just because you moved this man from one church to another, all of a sudden he's going to be like, oh, I don't like these kids over here. I like the kids better at the other church. No, he's going to continue doing what he's doing. They know he's going to continue doing what he's doing and they okay with it. Like I said, I want to share this video with you. Children are among the most cherished and vulnerable in any culture. Yet many suffer under great abuse, and some are intentionally exploited. Trafficking women and children for sexual purposes is as lucrative in the black market as smuggling drugs. The U.S. State Department estimates that the number of women and children that are trafficked globally each year is over one million, and children make up almost half of that number. Southeast Asian countries such as Thailand greatly depend on prostitution to support their economy. Here in Bangkok, almost half of the people prostituted are less than 14 years of age. And very young children can also be purchased. We're just looking for younger girls. Below 18. Take care of your room? Yeah, whether they take your room or whatever. Just somewhere you can have, but cannot take outside. Only make love in the room. Right. Somewhere cannot take outside, but they have for you. I have for you, but cannot take outside. You are too young. 
For make love only, no massage. Just make love only. Thousands of men from the West and other parts of Asia come here as sex tourists. Most just don't care how old the girls are that service them. Others come here specifically to molest children and then return home without anyone knowing what they have done. Even though it is against the law in most countries to prostitute children, corruption on the local level still prevails. I saw police went in there. No, don't worry. Are we okay here? Yeah. Why, why are we okay? Because the police men did not Either laws are just not enforced, or the government and police actually profit from this exploitation. This is a border crossing from Cambodia to Thailand where cameras are not allowed. Thousands of people cross the border every day and hundreds cross illegally under this bridge. Most of them are children that are used to smuggle items into Thailand. This little girl is being used in this way by her own family. She is very vulnerable and extremely high risk for sex trafficking. Once she is away from her family, she is picked up on the other side to be used in any fashion imaginable. Border police know what is going on, but do little to stop trafficking of any kind. Boys are also used in the growing sex industry. This little boy is a child of a woman working at a local brothel in a town that is almost completely dedicated to sex tourism. He's only two years old, yet he has been sold to brothels on three different occasions by his own grandfather. Each time he was bought back by his grandmother, who also brought him here, where he's now safe. Children growing up in this environment do not remain untouched by it. This is a pornographic movie house where dozens of men gather nightly. The number of places like this in Cambodia has increased significantly in the last few years. And with them, gang rape has increased at an alarming rate. Men and boys openly admit that they have acted out scenes from these movies and that children are regularly targeted. And as you can see in that video, it's, it's, it's a business, it's money, and it's so much money involved. It's so many adults involved. It's so many countries involved that they don't want to shut down the pipeline. They don't want to stop their money. And so they will continue to allow these children to be abused. So that's why I say we should still always point it out. We should still voice, you know, let everyone know what's going on, hold these people accountable, but don't try to force them to give you something they're not sorry for. Don't try to force them to give you an apology. Just because when you give them, when they say, I'm sorry, that, that, like I say, on a mental level, that make a lot of people think, oh, it's okay now because they say sorry. So never ask for an apology from a person that's abuse, abusive. Just because that's who they are. Apology isn't going to make, make any difference and it's not going to change them because that's that's how their heart is. And the other thing I want to say is like Ye did not want his daughter to be on um, TikTok. And I understand a lot of parents innocently put their kids on the internet. A lot of parents innocently um, dress their kids up. And so I'm not saying in sexual ways or anything like that, but they kind of look more adults, you know, like they, they kind of like dress them up to model and stuff like that. So they're not really looking like childlike, childlike. And you have to be mindful that there are perverts out there. And I want to share two pictures with you. Um, it was, it was a mother. She found out that her daughter, she had took a picture of her daughter. Her daughter was on the internet. Her daughter's picture was on Instagram. Some pervert took her daughter picture and made a sex doll out of it. So now somebody somewhere who's seen, you know, who's, a, was attracted to her daughter, got a sex doll and they're doing whatever they want to with that sexual they're doing sexual things with that doll in fantasy of her daughter. That's sick. And then it was another girl. She was like an uh, Instagram star. I think she was either 14 or 15. And on um, Etsy, 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 that site where you can go buy and sell things. The man was selling sex dolls of this 14, 15 year old girl. And he was like, if you want to change the hair color, if you want to do all this, you know, you can go through with it. 
And so they have these sex dolls looking like kids and people are actually buying them. Because like I say, a lot of people don't want to get caught up in actually having sex with kids because they know it's wrong. They know they will lose, you know, they, they will lose everything. So they, they work out their fantasies on sex dolls. But at some point it's going to get to the, get to the point where the doll isn't enough or being a voyeur isn't enough and they're going to want to go ahead and actually be with these kids but i'm going to share if i can i'm going to share those two pictures with you so with those two pictures you can see how perverted people are and why people don't say anything because like i said if you're talking about gay rights or gay this or gay this or transgender that it only affects those people if you're only talking about um roe versus way women having abortion and not having abortion it only affects those people but when you're talking about having sex with kids sex trafficking all this perversion it affects so many people in society because even if you're just dealing with sex dolls, what would make you as a person make a child doll that you know this grown man is going to be having sex with? Why would you steal a person image off the internet and create a sex doll so this person can have their fantasy? So if you're making it, even if you're not actually physically touching kids or have anything to do with kids, you're in the warehouse in the mountains somewhere making these dolls, why would you protest against that lifestyle? Why would you have anything to say as far as, no, these people should be locked up. No, these people shouldn't. Because if you say that, that's going to mess up your bottom line. If you're making dolls and you're selling these dolls and then the law come out that you can't sell these dolls anymore, that's going to make mess up your bottom line. So like I said, people sell their souls all the time. And you, it, it plays out, it plays out so much in the world that I don't understand why. It just frustrates me that that not uh, not enough people care about kids being sexualized. Not enough people care about people, you know, these kids suffering or anything like that. All they care about, you know, they would take up for the adults. You've seen it even with the Duggars when the, the son molested his two sisters. The father was taking up more for the son than he was for the daughter. You see it all the time. You see this happening all the time. It, it truly hurts my heart because these kids are just so innocent and they depend on adults to look after them. They depend on the, the adults to take care of them. And the people they're depending on are letting them down left and right. The people that they're depending on are are just letting them be victimized, letting them be victims. That's why I felt so strongly when I said all those kids that were sent over here by themselves should have been sent back home. Cause at one point in time I think over a thousand some kids became missing that was in that was in the um that the United States had that was in their, the camps they had those kids. I think a thousand some kids went missing. I don't even know if they found those kids. And they were supposed to be in the protection of the United States, you know, of, of the government, and they went missing. And so that's why I keep saying, you, you can't tell me that all these people that's coming across the border, they're not being victimized in some type of way. And so that's why the border needs to be closed. That's why they should never allow kids to come in the United States by themselves. That should be the number one thing that they stop, you know, so these those people on the other side won't be like, oh, I can send my kids. No, we're sending your kids back to you because you don't know the perversion that's over here, the perversion that may be waiting for them. The life, you, the great life that you think your child might end up having, they might have been better off staying with you than coming across the border to the United States. Because you can't guarantee that the hands that your kids going to fall in are going to be safe hands. You can't guarantee that these hand, those hands are going to take care of your kids, protect your kids, or they're looking at your kids as dollar signs. 
<clears throat> so that, that's, that's all I wanted to say about this situation. You know, it's just, look, just, just look at people for who they are. You know, stop putting these, these famous people, stop putting these brand names, these famous people on pedestals. They are human. They may think they are because they are elites or they're rubbing elbows with the elites because they're in that circle. They may think that they're okay. They may think they're fine, but they're not. They're not above the law. And they definitely are not above God's law. And they truly think they are, but they're not. And they will soon find out the hard way. And then also, um, when it comes to a voyeur, and this is another thing I want people to think about. A lot of people, they, they want to be in those circles with famous people, with, with movie stars, with actors, with singers, with different people like that. And um, in the Bible, it says there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new in this world. Back in the days, they would have houses. It's, it's just, it would just be a regular house. It's not necessarily a mansion or whatever. It's just a house. And the people that own the house or renting the house or whatever, they would throw part parties. And in these parties, you have to be invited. And it would be a guard standing at the door. So when you come in, they make sure that you're part of the guest list. Then once they let you in the back, as you're wandering through, you can go to different rooms and you can see you know you have an opportunity to see whatever you want to see if you just want to sit there and look you can sit there and look if you want to participate you can participate but it's every debauchery you can think going on in there and sometimes a person that's a voyeur they do that on purpose because they want to have something over you they go in there you see them so you feel like oh <coughs> Excuse me. So you see them, you feel like, oh, they're okay. But sometimes those people go there so they can see who's there, see what those people are doing, and then they take advantage of them. And they take advantage of them in a way that they say, hey, weren't you at such and such a party? Weren't you, aren't you married? But weren't you in, in that room with the, the um, having an orgy? Weren't you in that other room? where y'all was, um, it was one woman and five guys and y'all was running a train on her. So they go to these parties and they um, get information on these people and now these people are beholden to them. They're scared to say what they want to say. They're scared to do what they want, um, you know. They're scared because they know, people know their deep, darkest sexual secrets. People know their deep, darkest sexual fantasies. People know all this type of stuff stuff that they're doing. You got to understand why God kept <laughs> destroying the world before he sent Jesus. Because like with Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, you got to think about it. In the Bible, God is telling his people not to have sex with animals. Think about that. God is telling his people not to have sex with animals. Why? Because they was having sex with animals. They was having orgies. They was worshiping idols. They was having sex with animals. They was doing all type of ungodly sex that God was like, no, I need to put a stop to this. So he had to, he, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of all the things that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why now the only sex you're supposed to be having is between a man and his wife. That's the only type of sex you're supposed to be having because all this other stuff that's going on out there in the world that was going on back then. That's why I said there's nothing new in this world. The same type of stuff that's going on now was going on back then. If you if you really just look in the Bible and some of the stuff that's in the Bible, it would make you say, well, now these people was really back there in the biblical days and they was acting like this. They was off the chain like this. Now you got the internet. You got the world wide web. So you could really do things in the privacy of your own home. So a lot of that stuff, like I said, the elites, they get off on that because they don't believe in God. They believe they are God. They believe there's nothing above them. That's why they're trying so hard to figure out ways to live forever. But like I said, that's all I wanted to say. And um, 
Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.